in this case the patient has a blunt trauma and he had uh, his spectacles broken and there were some foreign body glass particles removed at the time of injury and he was sent back home this patient came back to us after two months and you can notice that there is a subluxation and the inferior nasal part of the uh, cataract and there are posterior sinicae and if you notice there is also some shiny impacted foreign body particle probably looks like a glass particle on the superior nasal side uh, which we will remove once the surgery is done the trick in while injecting these stripan blue dyes in these patient is not to over inflate the dye and even when you try to wash the dye do it very carefully and slowly the way i am doing because sometimes you can have the dye pass through the subluxation into the vitreous and you can end up having loss of glow and a task. So you realize that uh, I did a very controlled slow injection of the dye inside the eye and also the washing out of the dye was in slow bursts, dipping the scleral wound and taking it out. Second thing is injecting the viscoelastic from one side to and moving towards the wound and emptying the chamber with the aqueous also make sure that the viscoelastic doesn't go behind the subluxation. You can see just underneath the side pod there is subluxation. Now in a very controlled manner we break the posterior sinicae and we proceed towards capsular excess. Another thing to notice in these things is these capsules sometimes will be fibrotic in nature and they'll be brittle. It's always a good idea to maybe create a nick to start with with a needle though I usually prefer using a forceps to do my capsular excess but here I will use a needle to create a radial nick. I inflate the anterior chamber and I do a very very controlled part by part pulling of this fibrotic capsule because a sudden jerky movement can probably result into a peripheral tear. Since this is a very brittle capsule, I want to have a round rex as possible because I will be wanting to put a capsular tension ring into this patient later on. I don't miss the area of subluxation there on the inferior, uh, superior left part of the earth screen. We complete the capsular excess very gradually. Now the next stage again is to be done very, very controlled. I use my special bevel cannula to create the hydrodissection. Not a jerky movement, a very slow controlled hydrodissection because I don't want the subluxation to increase since it's a very soft cataract. I will do a controlled hydrodissection in all the areas and the advantage of using this cannula is that it gave me, lets me work in all the directions. There is a slight increase of uh, intraocular pressure. There was a slight iris prolapse. As I mentioned, the hydrodissection has to be controlled. Now I will use the viscoelastic to be pushing inside the capsular bag and try and push out my cortical matter and the cataractous matter. The more amount of material I can express out using viscoelastic, the safer it is for me because when I start doing my irrigation aspiration, I don't want to go into the capsular bag and uh, do many manipulations there. But again, pushing in of the viscoelastic also has to be in a controlled manner, lest you may create more zonular break and more subluxation. Now we will proceed to insert the capsular tension ring. The trick of inserting the capsular tension ring is always to go in from the area of least subluxation and proceed in a dialing manner which is tangential with tangential vector forces and then cross the area of subluxation. So you will notice the pushing forces are tangential and circular and as my CTR ring is going in, it's actually pushing back the area of subluxation. Now I will engage the eyelet of the CTR ring with the Sinsky hook. Now notice how I proceed. I push it downwards and dialing movement and as I get into the bag, I tilt my Sinsky hook to release the CTR. Now my bag is secured. I will make another side port now. Now normally I may have preferred to do a coaxial irrigation aspiration, but here I want to do a controlled aspiration using a bimanual uh, irrigation aspiration. And since the cataract is totally uh, 
uh, cortical and soft i don't need to use any fake emulsification here so we will proceed to do a controlled irrigation aspiration using the bimineral uh, cannula there the total cortical removal has taken place now you'll notice a little small little plaque here I wanted to actually proceed and do a posterior capsular excess here, but I thought maybe at since the patient has already got a subluxation, CTR is in. So I decided to go in and put a lens and maybe at a latter point do a posterior YAG capsulotomy. Now I proceed to identify that small foreign body which is actually shining out embedded and fibrotic uh, cyst of uh, conjunctiva. My forceps is actually giving you the feel that there is a gritty feeling there. And it is actually, I, pe I feel a very, very small particle of glass, which was probably missed at that time of uh, the previous surgery. And the patient also has no complaints with it. It's a sterile cyst with having a very small glass piece. I'm just trying to make sure that if I cut open this part of conjunctiva and if it's not... Uh, actually protruding into the intraocular area so i decide that let me first push in my IOL there and once the whole IOL is in then i will probably decide but then i realize that since this piece is now openly freely mobile and uh, it is totally visible to me then it is only just a subconjunctival impacted glass particle so i decide to put in the lens first i'm putting in uh, the intraocular lens here now again since it's a subluxated cataract it's a good idea not to over pressurize the anterior chamber with viscoelastic while doing a iol implant and also the trick which i've explained in all my previous videos that uh, the dialing of the iol has to be very gentle and gradual and the dialing vector should be that the area of the maximum diameter of the IOL which is the largest haptic diameter should actually be in the same plane as the maximum subluxation which normally for most IOLs is 30 degree offset of the haptic optic junction. Now you will notice we've actually placed the most area of the haptic uh, diameter in the area of subluxation. This acts like another uh, capsular tension ring and further reinforces the capsular bag. In one of the videos, which uh, link you are seeing above, we will also see how the IOL can be used as a secondary CTR in some cases when the CTR is not available. Now we proceed to do a bimanual viscoelastic removal in this particular case. We have hydrated the wound very well. The eye is uh, doing well. You can see a small little plaque on the posterior capsule, which I did decide to take it off at a latter point. Now, I just go in to snip that glass foreign body, which is in a fibrosed capsule. And then I, I just want to ensure that there is no glass foreign body left there. Now, to now find out whether there is any leak of any aqueous there or any uh, opening inside the intraocular tissue this is just a fibrotic adhesion between the tenons and the conjunctiva i'm just trying to break as as much amount of these adhesions as possible and the, the glass foreign body has been removed now good idea to check for any kind of leak here would be a kind of a modified seedles test which you can do by instilling some amount of tripon blue in that area if there is any amount of leakage happening here, it's a good idea to do this particular test before uh, you want to close such a, a lesion after removal of the foreign body. Uh, the same test can be used to find out leaky wounds in case you have a wound burn or an irregular uh, cataract surgery FECO wound. You can use this tripon blue to identify if there is a leak. It works like a CETLS test. And there I made sure there is no leak and the eye is absolutely normal. This patient did very well and the ACT capsulotomy was done after eight, month, eight weeks and the patient did very well. Thank you.